Optomidate, USAN, IN, VAN, marketed as amidate, is a short-acting intravenous anesthetic agent used for the induction of general anesthesia and sedation for short procedures such as reduction of dislocated joints, tracheal intubation, and cardioversion. It was developed at Janssen Pharmaceutica in 1964 and was introduced as an intravenous agent in 1972 in Europe and in 1983 in the United States. Medical uses Sedation and anesthesia In emergency settings, automidate was one of the most frequently used sedative hypnotic agents, however propofol is now usually the drug of choice due to its significantly better properties. It is used for conscious sedation and as a part of a rapid sequence induction to induce anesthesia. It is used as an anesthetic agent since it has a rapid onset of action and a safe cardiovascular risk profile, and therefore is less likely to cause a significant drop in blood pressure than other induction agents. In addition, automidate is often used because of its easy dosing profile, limited suppression of ventilation, lack of histamine liberation and protection from myocardial and cerebral ischemia. Thus, automidate is a good induction agent for people who are hemodynamically unstable. Automidate also has interesting characteristics for people with traumatic brain injury because it is one of the only anesthetic agents able to decrease intracranial pressure and maintain a normal arterial pressure. In those with sepsis, one dose of the medication does not appear to affect the risk of death. Speech and memory test Another use for automidate is to determine speech lateralization in people prior to performing lobectomies to remove epileptogenic centers in the brain. This is called the automidate speech and memory test, or ESAM, and is used at the Montreal Neurological Institute. However, only retrospective cohort studies support the use and safety of automidate for this test. Steroidogenesis inhibitor in addition to its action and use as an anesthetic, automidate has also been found to directly inhibit the enzymatic biosynthesis of steroid hormones, including corticosteroids in the adrenal gland. As the only adrenal steroidogenesis inhibitor available for intravenous or parenteral administration, it is useful in situations in which rapid control of hypercortisolism is necessary or in which oral administration is unfeasible. Death penalty the U.S. state of Florida used the drug in a death penalty procedure when Mark James Assay, 53, was executed on August 24, 2017. He became the first person in the U.S. to be given a lethal injection that included automidate as one of the drugs. Automidate replaces midazolam as the sedative. Drug companies have made it harder to buy midazolam for lethal injections. The automidate was followed by rocuronium bromide, a paralytic, and finally, potassium acetate in place of the commonly used potassium chloride injection to stop the heart. Potassium acetate was first used for this purpose inadvertently in a 2015 execution in Oklahoma. Adverse effects Automidate suppresses corticosteroid synthesis in the adrenal cortex by reversibly inhibiting 11-beta-hydroxylase, an enzyme important in adrenal steroid production. It leads to primary adrenal suppression. Using a continuous automidate infusion for sedation of critically ill trauma patients in intensive care units has been associated with increased mortality due to adrenal suppression. Continuous intravenous administration of automidate leads to adrenocortical dysfunction. The mortality of patients exposed to a continuous infusion of automidate for more than five days increased from 25% to 44%, mainly due to infectious causes such as pneumonia. Because of automidate-induced adrenal suppression, its use for patients with sepsis is controversial. Cortisol levels have been reported to be suppressed up to 72 hours after a single bolus of automidate in this population at risk for adrenal insufficiency. For this reason, many authors have suggested that automidate should never be used for critically ill patients with septic shock because it could increase mortality. However, other authors continue to defend automidate's use for septic patients because of automidate's safe hemodynamic profile and lack of clear evidence of harm. 
A study by Jabra et al. showed that a single dose of etomidate used for rapid sequence induction prior to endotracheal intubation has no effect on mortality compared to ketamine even though etomidate did cause transient adrenal suppression. In addition, a recent meta-analysis done by Holt could not conclude that etomidate increased mortality. The authors of this meta-analysis concluded more studies were needed because of lack of statistical power to conclude definitively about the effect of etomidate on mortality. Thus, Hole suggests a burden to prove etomidate is safe for use in septic patients, and more research is needed before it is used. Other authors advise giving a prophylactic dose of steroids e.g. hydrocortisone if etomidate is used, but only one small prospective controlled study in patients undergoing colorectal surgery has verified the safety of giving stress dose corticosteroids to all patients receiving etomidate. In a retrospective review of almost 32,000 people, etomidate, when used for the induction of anesthesia, was associated 2.5-fold increase in the risk of dying compared with those given propofol. People given etomidate also had significantly greater odds of having cardiovascular morbidity and significantly longer hospital stay. These results, especially given the large size of study, strongly suggest that, at the very least, clinicians should use etomidate judiciously. In people with traumatic brain injury, etomidate use is associated with a blunting of an ACTH stimulation test. The clinical impact of this effect has yet to be determined. In addition, concurrent use of etomidate with opioids and or benzodiazepines, is hypothesized to exacerbate etomidate-related adrenal insufficiency. However, only retrospective evidence of this effect exists and prospective studies are needed to measure the clinical impact of this interaction. Atomidate is associated with a high incidence of burning on injection, postoperative nausea and vomiting, and superficial thrombophlebitis with rates higher than propofol. Pharmacology Pharmacodynamics R. Atomidate is tenfold more potent than its S. enantiomer. At low concentrations, R. Atomidate is a modulator at GABAA receptors containing beta 2 and beta 3 subunits. At higher concentrations, it can elicit currents in the absence of GABA and behaves as an allosteric agonist. Its binding site is located in the transmembrane section of this receptor between the alpha and beta subunits alpha minus beta plus, beta 3 containing GABAA receptors are involved in the anesthetic actions of etomidate, while the beta 2 containing receptors are involved in some of the sedative and other actions. Pharmacokinetics at the typical dose, anesthesia is induced for about 5 to 10 minutes, though the half-life of drug metabolism is about 75 minutes, because atomidate is redistributed from the plasma to other tissues. Onset of action, 30 to 60 seconds Peak effect, 1 minute Duration, 3 to 5 minutes, terminated by redistribution Distribution, VD, 2 to 4.5 L per kilogram Protein binding, 76% Metabolism, hepatic and plasma esterases Half-life distribution, 2. 7 minutes Half-life redistribution, 29 minutes Half-life elimination, 2.9 to 5.3 hours Metabolism Atomidate is highly protein-bound in blood plasma and is metabolized by hepatic and plasma esterases to inactive products. It exhibits a B-exponential decline. Formulation Atomidate is usually presented as a clear colorless solution for injection containing 2 mg per milliliter of atomidate in an aqueous solution of 35% propylene glycol, although a lipid emulsion preparation of equivalent strength has also been introduced. Atomidate was originally formulated as a racemic mixture, but the R form is substantially more active than its enantiomer. It was later reformulated as a single enantiomer drug, becoming the first general anesthetic in that class to be used clinically. References Citations Sources <references>